guys saw some of that footage from the Rock Racing uh, Toys for Tot race. Um, that was my second race, and it was a lot of fun. Um, I think the biggest thing for me is uh, a couple things, actually. Uh, I got to meet uh, some new people, particularly uh, one guy who's the one that invited me, which was Daniel Rankin. And I thank you, dude. Huge help. Really cool dude. Um, you know, he's been doing RC for quite a long time. And someone like myself who is new at the hobby, he helped out a lot. And uh, very cool. And uh, basically, I raced the novice race. Or I should say sportsman. I raced sportsman nitro. And uh, to sum it all up, there was three five-minute qualifier rounds, and uh, I started off in the B main. I did not make the A main right off the bat with the qualifiers. Uh, started off in the B main, I believe, in sixth place off the start. Um, halfway through the race, I ended up being like in tenth place, and then I ended up catching back up and got third place, just barely, just missing the bump spot. So, uh, first and second place in B main, got bumped to A main. Uh, my buddy Daniel, he uh, made A main through his qualifiers, and I believe he got seventh place. But uh, overall, had a great time, uh, learned a lot. Um, Daniel was able to show me um, a lot of cool tips and tricks. For example, at the race, first time I ever used a headset. At this race, is the first time I've actually was in a a, B, or C main. I was in a B main, and so it was the first for me, you know, the way they put the cars down on the track, you know, and actually my first time pitting. Um, so, if you haven't noticed already, you're probably wondering, what is up with the purple head? So, to keep it short, basically, my stock Kyosho motor, um, after the second qualifier round, uh, I noticed my drivetrain was locking up and I couldn't really spin the tires and basically uh, kind of noticed it was kind of binding near the clutch bell area. So once again, you know, I, I clutch bell issues again, right? Uh, removed the motor uh, between second and third qualifier and noticed it took my clutch apart, took the clutch bell off and found that one of the clutch springs had broken or the clutch spring broke and got stuck between the uh, clutch shoe and the clutch bell. And uh, that was causing it to drag. Uh, during my qualifying, qualifying one and two, uh, my engine would not idle. Uh, I thought, you know, I had it properly tuned. Um, I had it running great beforehand. Uh, during practice and for whatever reason the engine started with an idle and every time I'd come to a, to a stop or hit the brakes for a long period of time it would just shut off so both qualify both qualifying rounds one and two the car died on me twice flamed out twice so that's partially why I did really bad I think in qualifying but uh, overall um, I was extremely happy with the car uh, with all the new setup that I've got going on um, with the new setup everything that I changed I went to the 13 degree caster blocks to give me more steering I like a lot of steering in my car I guess I know everyone's running like 17 and 19 but uh, the changes I've made the being a wider track with 13 degree caster blocks um, while I was at the track I had a changed ride height um, I'd adjust the, the spring collars one millimeter softer than what I had it at Bullet Town. And what a difference. One millimeter in uh, spring height in the collar adjustment. It's amazing how much of a difference it makes on the car. Um, I noticed my car was bouncing a little bit, maybe a little too stiff. And I went up on all four corners and then it was pretty solid from there. I was very happy with it. Um, I think I, I drove a little conservative. I was just trying to be, you know, trying to stay under control and be smooth. Um, I was afraid to, to really give it throttle around some of the corners that they had there because they were sharp, quick corners 
like into a small double and if I messed up there, there wasn't much room for air I would have went straight into a metal pole it's just wasn't comfortable uh, going through those corners at high speed and I, I noticed th during my beaming about halfway through I started you know was trying to wanting to catch up to that that second place bump spot so I started kind of gunning it through the corner I noticed that you know when I did that the car was able to rotate kind of spin out a little bit and rotate better and I was like oh man I should have been doing this the whole time but uh you know still learning um but yeah so anyways, I wanted to go over the car with you guys and just kind of show you what it looks like after the race. So back to the motor. Why is there a Nova Rossi uh, Mido 7? I think that's how you say it, Mido. Mido 7 in the, in the car. Well, during that sec, after that second qualify, my buddy Daniel was like, hey man, he's like, we, 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 we got to get you in the A-Main, and I don't think you're going to be able to do it with that motor. And, I, and he offered, he's like, hey, I got a motor, fresh, it said fresh Nova Rossi, with a fresh clutch in it. He's like, let's drop it in. And uh, so I was like, oh, okay, let's, let's do it. So we put that motor in this car, uh, got it tuned up just before my third qualifier, and man, what a difference. I can't believe how much power this thing puts out compared to that Kyosho motor. Night and day difference. I'm talking with the, with the Kyosho motor, with it on the um, stand or the starter box, when you would give it full throttle, the wheels would like barely, you know, balloon. With this thing, they were ballooning like crazy. A ton of power. Um, this motor ran great. Was totally not used to that much power. And uh, it was a lot of fun. And after running the car, that one qualifier, and then actually running this Snow Verossi through the, the entire B main, I was already sold on needing a new motor. Um, desperately needing a new motor, I should say. Anyways, um, that being said, I think the Kyosho motor just kind of got tired after the two gallons. This is a hard two gallons. I'm really hard on my cars. I, I guess who isn't, right? But uh lasts about two gallons, and I think it lost a little bit of compression. You know, that trick where you hold the flywheel at top dead center, like mine will just... Pfft. So I don't think there's much pinch in it left. Um, I did run some after-run oil through it and kind of gained a little bit more compression. But um, I think it's a little bit tired. And I think it's also had idling issues because... It's developed some air leaks around the carburetor and the front uh, main bearing. So I think it's just a little tired and uh, it's time to upgrade anyways. So I'll hopefully be getting a new motor here shortly. Meanwhile, Daniel let me uh, keep the Nova Rossi in the car because, uh, well, I didn't have time to pull it out. And we were there for, well, you know, we left at 2.30 in the morning and drove three and a half hours to uh rock racing's track and uh start got on the track probably about 7 30 racing started uh about 8 39 and we raced all day it was a whole day event and i didn't leave the track till about 10 didn't get home till 1 30 so it was almost a 24 hour day i think it was like 23 hours straight but uh, hey, um, it was a lot of fun. It was it was worth it. And like I said, I got to meet Daniel. He was a really cool dude. Got to meet you know this whole crew that he runs with at Chuckles RC. I got to meet some of them guys. Um, There's uh, one guy, Nathan. Shout out to Nathan who pitted for for myself and and Daniel um, and all the the help all those guys have given given me uh, during that race. It was really cool. One thing that was really cool about the race too is there were some other Kyoshos out there. In the Truggy class, uh, a, a Kyosho took uh, in the, a first and a second. They were both MP10 Truggies and both first and second place were the MP10 Truggies. So that was cool. In the Pro Nitro class, there was two MP10 uh, Kyoshos out there. Um, so that was really cool. 
Um, I'm not sure what place they they got in, but I'll tell you what, they looked pretty good. Um, and I remember seeing one other, I think, MP9 out there. It was, a, it was a re-embodied one, and I never got to catch up with that person. But I tried to talk to the people that I could find them at Running Kyoshos to say hi to them. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, back, we'll go back to the car. Basically, uh, after my first qualifier round, the rear shock tower, I bent it. Um, it was bent pretty bad to where it, it was rubbing onto the axle here or the drive shaft. So what I did is I took it, took the shock off the shock tower and I bent it back with a crescent wrench the best I could. Uh, so that was nice. I was able to bend it back. It wasn't perfect. And now it's time to upgrade that rear shock tower. So other than that, the body ended up breaking here at the exhaust before I put the Novorossi in. So the body's pretty much done at this point. Other than that, everything else is pretty solid. So before this race, I uh, went through the uh, front, center, and rear diffs. I put 7,000 diff fluid in the front. I put uh, 7,000 diff fluid in the center. And I put three in the rear. Uh, the rear got the new lightweight bevel shafts. The center got the added bevel shaft and bevel gear. And the front, I still have yet to upgrade. Um, but I will hear shortly. Um, what else? Other than that, super happy with the car. Also, I got the lightweight uh, shock um, pins and the control arms now too. But uh, no, the car drove fantastic. I personally thought it looked pretty good out there. Um, you know, me and my bling and orange wheels, right? But, uh, yeah, I did pretty good, I thought. Oh, one thing that also I broke was the antenna tube. And I just learned that you're supposed to put a little piece of fuel tubing so it can flex. So, I did not know that. And as you can see, it's all bent and destroyed here. But, uh, yeah. But that Novorossi looks good in it. For sure. Very grateful for Daniel loaning me that motor. I mean, super cool. I mean, he straight up was like, here, dude, we're going to try to get you the same main. Drop this thing in. And I was like, all right, cool. So, a lot of help. Without without this motor, I don't think I would have made it past the, the third qualifier. Because my motor was running really bad. So... But uh, very happy with the way the car handled. Amazing. Also, just to reflect, I do got the MP9 kit uh, th throttle horn with all the linkage. It's got the MP9 center uh, brakes. So a lot of things have been upgraded to the kit. I did end up replacing the drive cups, pinion drive cups here. So the whole center drive line has been updated. Still running the stock shafts though, but the cups, the brakes, um, the upper mount, the, the brake linkage, all that's been upgraded in the car. Still dirty from the race. I gotta go through and clean it. But uh, other than that, nothing else is really broken. Oh. Take that back. One other problem I've been having is that the front screws here and the front shock tower are backing out. But, uh, that's new. The Kyosho D, D block there. But, uh, yeah. This thing's a beast with the snow Barassi in it. Had a ton of fun. I think the event was was uh, really good. A lot of people showed up. It was like I said, it was a toys for a tot race, so there was a ton of RC toy car donations, and I believe it went to the Marines. The Marines, you know, have been doing this kind of stuff forever, and they donate the 
to you know the local community there in Knoxville. By the way, this race was in Knoxville, Tennessee. And uh, yeah, so at this point, you know, I'm on a mission to get a new motor. Along with that new motor, I gotta get a pipe. Um, I forget what pipe Daniel said this was, but uh, it is, I believe, an 85 millimeter header. And uh, yeah, but man, it worked great in the car. Completely different car with, with, with this much power. And uh, it was nice. Before, you know, with, with the, at that track, at that race, during the qualifying, there was this really big double in the center. And if I were to cut the corner and goose it with the Kyosho motor, the KE21, um, I barely make the double. It took everything, every, every bit of focus and, and perf perfection, full throttle, cutting it in the corner to barely make it over. And with this thing, Dude, it was like a breeze. I can like float over at half throttle, cut in the corner, and this thing just went over. So, uh, way more power. Definitely, that Kyosho motor is tired. And nor did it ever put, produce the power I think these things can produce anyways. By the way, when I did the diffs, I did put new drive cups. So that is also new. So I actually did a, quite a bit of upgrades on this thing before this race. And uh, like I said, slowly but surely, I'm putting the, the MP9 kit parts on it. Some MP10 parts when I can, if, if it can fit. Um, but as of right now, at that track, it was a, by the way, that track condition, it's very high grip track. Um, I believe it's clay, it's clay dirt, very hard packed, very, um, high traction and me being a noob I still this is the only tires I got for this thing and I'm running the blockades m3 compounds and I have it enough I have nothing to compare it to but I felt like it, it did pretty good so um, yeah Overall, extremely happy with the MP9. I think this car is amazing. It's, uh, you know, you you buy this RTR and you can slowly upgrade it to the kit model. There's not much, you know, different. At least when it comes to plastic. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, it's been a lot of fun updating this thing too. And, you know, for me going out there, I'm always a little embarrassed to say, oh, yeah, it's an RTR because, you know, a lot in the racing scene, everyone knows RTR is almost, you can't compare it to the kits. But I think with Kyosho's model, it's very close. It's a great car to get you started. And once that person starts and gets that initial, that first race in, I think they're hooked and they start upgrading the car from there without actually having to buy a complete other kit. But uh, uh, man, what a great car. Absolutely had a blast. Um, I'm very proud of my upgrades. I think it looks pretty cool now. And uh, I'd like to thank Daniel Rankin for loaning me this motor. Um, couldn't have done that race without him. And uh, what else? Uh, to the guys I met at Chuckles RC, thank you. It's nice meeting you. And uh, I'm looking forward to next time. I plan on racing with, with these guys I went with uh, more often. And uh, that's what it's all about. I had a lot of fun. So thank you.